Hey, happy Friday night. This is Sam Rask with the uh, with Believe Health and the uh, Food Tube Buy program. Coming to you hopefully with some Friday night light bites uh, or light bite Friday night, however we want to say it. Um, I use Friday night to actually go through and just collect up all my uh, leftovers and bits and bites from the week and create a nice platter for us to uh, to sort of gosh on for the evening. So let me check. I've got some new setup. You can see I've got I've got kitchen from another direction. I just want to see what's going on here. Fantastic. I've already got some people on. This is great. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Shauna, how are you? So good to see you on. Thanks for shouting out. Anyone who's here, shout to me so that I can uh, I can see you. And you know I'm kind of blind, so um, I'm gonna need to need to see a big shout. So tonight, what I've got are um, some some cool leftovers. Let me just show you. All right. So last couple a couple of nights ago, I made these. They don't look like much, but hang on. Let me just let me just pull one of these babies out. This is a this is an oven dried tomato. Oh my gosh, let me just find another one that's maybe a little bit, yeah, so you can see this is a, these were the biggest Roma tomatoes I have ever seen. And I just took, cut them in half, put a little bit of um, EVOO, extra virgin olive oil on them, some great uh, Mexican frontier spices that I'll show you, um, and then left them in a, um, a 300 degree oven for like four hours. And that was it. Um, about halfway through, because these were so big, I took a masher and I mashed them down and then kept cooking because really what you want to do is cook out all of the liquid and then you're left with these beautiful gems. Um, and I, um, on a different show, I made Napoleons with them, um, but I've got these left over. So you're going to see I'm going to make them into a little, um, a fresh corn salad. Um, I've got uh, potato crisps in the oven that we're going to use today. Well, this will make a simple, a super simple guacamole. And then I have a few other bits and bites just to just to nosh on. So let's get started. Let me wipe my hands. All right, so let's see. Can you see? Yeah, you can see the stove top. So in the um, in the my favorite pan, you know, the stob pan that I use every single time to cook. Yeah, I've just got onions that are sauteing. And I've literally put nothing in there but avocado oil yet. So um, so let me let me spice this up a little bit. I'm gonna put, this is real sea salt. One of my favorites. Thank you, Dr. B, if you're watching. Um, here's some pepper. So this is, this is the start of the corn salad and you're gonna see just how blazing quick this thing comes together. Cause again, this is Friday night cooking. This is, this is worse than during the week cooking. This is like, I've done, you know, 21 meals this week and I'm exhausted kind of cooking. Um, so, <laughs> but we still want it flavorful. We still want it good. We want it to feel a little bit naughty, but not really kill the diet. Um, and so the key to that is just a few bits where it feels like it's homemade, but it's really not, and you'll see. All right, so this, I'm gonna put this in there right now. This is called a harissa spice, H-A-R-I-S-S-A. -S -S I'm gonna put a connection for it. This spice is Moroccan. It's gorgeous. Um, I'm, just, I'm, lit, I'm gonna put a lot in, because I kind of like it. It's a little bit spicy. The base of it is um, smoked paprika, which if you watch me, you know exactly how much I love the smoked paprika. Then in there are things like um, mint and coriander and cumin. This is such a beautiful mix. I just sort of like fell into it one day um, and I tried it on something and really, really liked it. So we're gonna put it in several things tonight, okay? So I just put that into the onions. Let's just see how we're doing. Oh, I know. Christina Whitaker, thank you for putting it up there. I meant to say that Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, um, you know, today. And so, um, what a what a frontier woman when you think about it. She played with the big boys at a time when um, not too many women were. We have to, whether we agree with her or disagree with her, um, we have to do hats off because she really blazed a trail for, for professional women, I think. Um, so, so, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, thank you so much for your service to our country and life well led. Um, okay, so I'm going to wait. I just went, okay, I've got a grill pan, my favorite grill pan. You probably saw the, the um, connect to this grill pan out there. I've got that smoking hot. I've got a little secret for my son. So my son's coming home today, um, Corbin, and uh, and he lost a bird he's raised from, from an egg. He had a beautiful love bird named Flink, um, who's been with us, we figure, more than 20 years. Um, and 
Link died today too. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Link, this meal is for you. Um, but he loves sausage. So what I did was just cut it. I had a little piece left. So I cut it into slices and I'm going to put it on the grill pan. And there is nothing more to it than that. I'm just going to make both sides super crispy. I'll make nice little bites of him. The key to buying, um, you know, sausage like this is you're going to have fat because sausage needs fat in it. That's okay. What you want is um, animals that are treated well um, in their life. They, they open ranges, they are fed well, they're fed appropriately to their species, and, um, and then they're, they're slaughtered humanely as well. Um, and then in the sausage itself, you don't want to see things like nitrites or nitrates. You really, really want to get sausage from a butcher and know the, know the source of the meat and how it was actually packaged. So this one came from, I like going to Sprouts, so if you, anyone, you know, in the local SoCal area or, or where a Sprouts is, I think they have a really decent butcher and I love, I love the um, sausages I get from there. Yep, we're doing good, we're doing really good. So sausage, they'll get crispy on both sides. Onions are almost done. All right, so now that the onions are all done, let me show you what we're gonna have next. All right, I have this. I found this in my freezer. Oh my gosh. Organic fire roasted corn. I don't even know if you can read that. Sorry. Fire roasted corn. This stuff is so awesome. Look at this. You know what's in it? Fire roasted corn. No other ingredients. Look at how beautiful that is. It tastes like um, like it's actually been, been charred and it's really good quality corn and it's really not a bad frozen product. I know there's one at Trader Joe's as well. This one I got from Whole Foods. All I've done is let this sit down on the counter this afternoon and it's defrosted. If you didn't have time to do that and you had to pull it right from your freezer, just put it in the microwave for a few minutes. If you don't want this going in frozen, you just want it going in, here I'm just put the whole bag in there because we'll eat this over the weekend with tacos. So all that flavor, what we did was put all the spices down in the onions first. Um, and why we did is because we want those spices to bloom. The, the spices will soften and then they'll, they'll become bitter and better. If not, they'll kind of go down into the onions and, uh, and blossom. All right, corn's in. Okay, that's almost done. A few things you can do to this. If you like kind of this idea, you can put, if you had it in the house, a can of black beans in there. You could put tomatoes in there. You could put peppers in there. You could finish it with um, cilantro or parsley, and we're gonna do that tonight. Um, you could put queso fresco, like crumbled over the top. And this becomes like the perfect topping for a soft taco, a lettuce wrap, um, or what we're gonna do tonight is, um, <coughs> excuse me, eat it on um, potato chips, home potato chips. Here we go. This is almost done. We'll let that cook. We're going to put that on low. All that has to do now is to eat. Let's see if these babies are ready to turn over. Oh my gosh, look at that. Hold on. Look at that. Woo! Oh, he's going to be so happy. He's not going to be happy because he lost his bird. But he's going to be eating well, poor sweet thing. Blink was a good bird. Oh, oh my gosh, these are so pretty. You could do this with kielbasa, you could do it with sausage, you could do it with chorizo, like there's just any number thing. And all it is is, uh, is a hot grill pan, which is one of my favorite pans, that I use just a little bit of olive oil spray, and there's a bunch of really good ones out there. I put a little bit of spray, I don't use spray very often, but on a grill pan like this, I find it's just a nice way to put a little coating. Uh, but make sure you get a good brand because the spray doesn't have chemicals. Hang on, I'm getting potato chips right now. Give me a second. Okay, I just want to show you, and I've got pictures of the before and after. Um, these were potatoes that I just cut. I added um, a little bit, like a tablespoon of um, avocado oil and some of that harissa spice. They've been in, hang on. They've been in the 
oven now for um, for 15 minutes at 425. I used my convection um, setting. Uh, Catherine Canal, if you're on tonight, um, this would be absolutely perfect in your air fryer. <laughs> so if you do it, just let me know how it comes out because I'd love to know some times and stuff so that I can um, I can post that. But 425 on a regular oven works in about 30 minutes. 425 with the um, convection setting, I think it's going to be done in about um, maybe another five minutes, so 20 minutes total. My bet is that Catherine can get it done in um, somewhere in the 12 to 15 minute range. But they make these nice crispy little potato chips. Um, the key to me in trying to, um, you know, keep a, a light diet and something under check, when we do stuff like this, um, I don't make big, massive platters. I save that for when we're entertaining. If it's just family, I put this stuff on so we feel like we all got enough, but that we didn't overindulge. Um, and so the baked chips, I used, and you can see the pictures posted on the site, I used two small potatoes, just cut into, you know, cut into slices. I knifed I am the potato. I didn't actually my mandolin. If somebody got a good mandolin, that would go so fast. My mandolin is one of the less expensive ones, so it only has one setting, and it was too thin. So the potato chip really, they just go to nothing. I like a little thicker piece of potato. All right, and I don't turn over anything. They literally just creep up in the oven. It's beautiful. All right, so corn is almost done. I'm going to cut the parsley right now. Um, my, the um, sausage is now done. Let's get this off the heat. That can just sit right there until we're ready to plate. That can sit until we're ready to plate. Let's put the parsley into the um, into the corn. So let's see if you can see my cutting board. Hey, this is not so bad. I have one of those super cool like bendy arm things and I've been playing around with different angles. So you'll have to tell me if you like this one. All right, so this is washed. This is parsley. I've been using a lot of cilantro this week so I didn't have any cilantro left. But I've got parsley and um, something like this. I don't get too fancy. I literally, look at that, I cut this down. I'm gonna run my knife through this a couple of times so that it's, it's just gonna you know, take a little woodsiness off of it, make it bite size, so that every bite gets, gets eaten. Oh, can you see it? There's Annie. Fortunately, we don't have any UPS deliveries right now, otherwise you'd hear her. <laughs> Look at this. All right. I don't know that I'm gonna put all of that in, but we've got, oh gosh, that parsley smells really good. Okay, so we're gonna put some of this. Let's get some green into this corn. <coughs> Annie, you're fine. Thanks, baby. All right. Corn looks good. I don't know if you feel, oh, sorry, let me switch it back. <laughs> corn looks good. Hi, Gail. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Shauna. So good to see you all. Oh, I see how to scroll now. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at, hey everyone. Hi, Kate. Hi, Janet. So good to see all of you. So, corn dip is, is great. We're waiting on the potato chips. What, we're, what I want to do now is take these tomatoes. I'm going to go back to the cutting board. What? I can that too? All right, and we will, I'm just gonna, we're gonna eat these room temperature because these are, these are so good. They're like eating, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open one up and show you. These are like eating little raisins. Like, I don't know if you can, you can see that, but look in the middle of that tomato. So if you cook them long enough, they turn into um, the equivalent of what you buy, like a dried, um, sun-dried tomato. I don't like them quite that done. I like them to still have a little bit of like juice and um, and a little bit of give to them. I think they're beautiful. I would put these on pizza. Uh, they're so good. I would I would put them into pasta. We're gonna put them right into the middle of that of that corn that corn salad. All right. Let's see. Bowl. Spoon. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, God. I forgot to switch you again. There you go. Yeah. So corn salad right in there. All right. Then uh, some of these tomatoes right on top. Oh, 
right. Let me, let me cut a few more of these. Look at, we've got, we've got beautiful tomatoes. And we're gonna just scoop those up with the potatoes. <laughs> that is going to be fabulous. All right, I hear my potatoes. Those sound done, give me a second. Oh my God. Yes. All right. So look at these. Let me just take them. Oh, look at that. Let me just put one together. I shouldn't be doing this with my fingers, but really, this is the way we're going to eat it. Look at these. Okay. So that's one of the appetizers. We're going to literally sit out by the pool and we're going to have a little bit of corn. Roast, you know, the oven fried tomato on homemade crisp. Let me just take a quick bite. Mm -hmm. mm. So you can taste, when I did the tomatoes, I did the same, no, I did, I did a Mexican blended spice. So it's got oregano in it, it's got garlic in it, and it has chili spice. You can get, you get a little bit of kick from it. The corn had that harissa in it as did the potatoes. And so they have a little bit more of the Moroccan like spiciness. It's dynamite. It's really, really good. So let me put this down. Here's one. And then at the end, I'll show you the platter that I'm putting together. All right. Now the next, let's see. The next and the last thing we're going to do is just a very, very quick guacamole. And I'm going to show you, let's see if you can see. Yep. I'm going to show you how fast you can do it with just some things that you have in the kitchen. Now I have, I have avocados that are super soft. They're not going to last another day. In fact, they may already be, um, be gone. So we won't know until we cut inside. Okay. So the key to avocados, a big knife is let the avocado spin and do the work. Look at how beautiful that is. Right, so this is avocado, gorgeous, and it's super soft. So we're just going to scoop that out. This one, the easiest way to do this is to right into the knife, spin that out. Another side of the avocado is gorgeous. Again, spoon, spoon it out. These avocados really are perfect for guacamole. You don't want them hard. You want them super soft. Those are so soft. Those just come right out. You can use the knife, but really, really, you don't need to. All right, let's see. One more. Spin. Spin it right on the knife. Twist. Ooh, another one. Oh, I got lucky. Oh, yeah, which is good because these avocados are expensive. I don't know if you guys are buying avocados in your area, but holy cow, they're, they're expensive right now. So I hate when they come and they're black inside. All right, let's do this. Okay, now, the next thing, when you make guacamole, really what guacamole is, is a vehicle for other flavors. Because avocados are, are pretty flavorless themselves. So what I like to do is... Um, add tomatoes, I add garlic, I add lime juice, um, I add onions, and when I'm making a, a, a fresh hot bowl, like, that's what I would do, do, all of those different pieces. But on a Friday night like this, who feels like making guacamole from scratch? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. That's okay. You know what I don't feel like doing? I don't feel like making uh, guacamole from scratch. So what I'm going to do, I've got, <laughs> I've got the remains of a salsa. This actually is a really decent salsa. It has all clean product in it. It's all organic. Um, it's mild because that's the way my palate is and, and uh, my family. It's past its prime. Uh, so on its own, it's a little a little sketchy, but in a guacamole, it would be so good. So I'm literally going to make Oh, are we back? I'm hoping we're back. Okay, um, I'm gonna make a, I don't know how much got cut off. I'm gonna make a guacamole out of this salsa and those avocados. So watch how fast this comes together. 
And we'll put a little lime juice in if it feels like we need it. But we take the soft avocados, mash them down. Let's see if you can see. Yep, you can see right in that spot. Turn your head if avocados aren't your thing. <laughs> and then we're going to add salsa to it. Now, I think some purists would tell me I haven't really made guacamole. What I've made is an avocado mash with salsa in it, and I'm okay with that. If you're a purist and don't want to call this guacamole, I totally get that. But this is, this is quick Friday night. I want something that tastes really good, that has great flavor, but isn't a lot of work. Look at that. All right. I think we've got it. Okay, let me taste. Let's see. I need another another spoon. I really do need kitchen help. <laughs> That's actually pretty close. We're going to put a little bit more salt because the avocados are pretty bland, so they need it. We're going to put some, some black pepper. And I'm going to cut a lime and put just a little bit of fresh lime juice in it just to, to zhuzh it up just a little bit. And then that's going to be perfect. All right. Oh, I can smell it. Okay, the lime juice makes all the difference. Let me grab one more potato chip. Here, I'll take a little one. Look at this. Look at how cute. And a little potato. So, there you go. So now we have fresh guacamole. We made homemade potato chips. I gotta show you guys these again. Literally cut two potatoes, put a teaspoon of, of avocado over the top, harissa spice into the oven. Then we have these fantastic potato chips. Now the key to these, see the, the, um, the width there? All right, doesn't matter what the width is, you just have to make sure that every potato is the same. That's why the, um, the mandolin works so well. If you've got one, fantastic. If you don't, just take a little extra care. It's one of those things that you're going to go slowly with your knife um, just to make sure that they're all roughly the same. Otherwise, you're going to have some that are undercooked and too soft and others that are, you know, that are slightly um, overdone or too completely overdone. All right, so let me get the platter because I'm going to show you how we're putting this together. All right. Let's Let's move some things out. Thank you for bearing with me. We're still perfecting the food 2.5 kitchen. <laughs> Making sure that it's it's ready for, uh, for action. All right, so on the platter is the corn salad we made. So you can see, just beautifully done. Just so you see the corn a little bit more. I just threw the sun-dried tomatoes, or the oven-dried tomatoes, excuse me, over the top of that because I think the two just go beautifully together. Another thing I pulled out of my cupboard, and it's on our website if you didn't see the video, but these cocoa roasted almonds, I still have them around, so I put a few of those out. Let's see, we'll take this, we're gonna put some of that guacamole into, into a bowl, I've got Beautiful. I've got the last of the radishes. Here, we'll put a radish right in on top. I've got a bunch of these um, these baby bell peppers. I love these. These are great dippers. So the only starch we have here is we do have starch in the corn, we have starch in the potatoes, but we don't have any refined or processed anything. This is all really good food. So we've got peppers, we've got radishes, we've got the gorgeous guacamole, we've got corn salad, and now let me just put some of these potato chips on. Now that they've come to closer to room temperature. Look at this. Oh, and then my son's favorite. Here, we'll find a spot. We'll put them, put them right in the bowl here. His favorite little noshing bites is going to be so not so unhappy when he comes home and sees these. Gorgeous. All right, look at that. Here we go. So we are two minutes from feasting on just leftovers from the fridge. 
So really cool that you can, within about 20 minutes, pull together that many appetizers, isn't it? It's a great way to eat. Yeah, Cynthia, you're so right. Black beans would be so perfect in that. I think so too. And bell peppers would be so good right in that corn. Um, oh, beautiful. Okay, let me just see, see if there's any questions that I have missed. I'm so sorry with this. I try hard. <laughs> hey, Pam. Hey, Rosemary. Oh my God, Jane. So good. Christina, Nicole. I'm so happy you all came. <laughs> so let me just wrap up because it's Friday night and you all have things you want to do. But it's... Um, it is light bite Friday nights. Um, we're gonna keep coming back on Friday nights and doing little finger foods like this, leftovers from the kitchen. So you're roughly gonna know what I have to work with because I'll be doing all of the cooking during the week and just assembling on a Friday night. But thank you so much. Have a great night and come back again because we're cooking in this kitchen. All right, bye now.